Well, what's up, everybody, and welcome to Thrive. I hope you're doing fantastic. I hope you're doing incredible. I hope you're doing amazing, and I'm excited about our time together. I know you're probably thinking, Darius, every time we do this, you say you're excited, and that's that's 100%. That's, that's right. Here it is. Your assignment should create some excitement. Ooh, we, we're, we're, we're coming out the gate, right? We're going there already. Somebody write that down. Type it down, whatever note, whatever note taking device you have, make sure you you log that. Right. Yeah. Your assignment should create some excitement. Come on. Your purpose should produce some passion. Think about that. And so, yes, I'm excited because I feel like I'm doing what I was born to do. Yes, I'm excited because I know the transformational power of truth. Listen to me. I know the transformational power of truth. And so I just believe some significant transformations are going to transpire as a result of thriving, uh, of thrive and you thriving. Hey, you're watching this for the first time. Shout out to you. Glad to have you with us. Uh, <clears throat> we believe there are three ways you can live your life sinking, surviving or thriving. We all about level three here. It's about thriving, not just so that we can be our best self. That's part of it, but so that we can do our best work. So that we can make the contribution to the earth we've been called and created to make, man. Yeah. If you with me there, say I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. We about that life. So excited. So we teach in series on Thrive, during Thrive rather. And we're in a series called I'm Gifted, where we are exploring and explaining this concept called spiritual gifts. Now, why is this important? It's incredibly important because most of the contribution you're making to the lives of others and to the world or well, most of the contributions that most people are making to the lives of others and to the world is a contribution that they're only making with their natural ability, that's talent or acquired skill, those competencies, those things that they've learned. But there, <laughs> there's another type of competence. There's another kind of personal asset that you have. It's intangible, but it's called a spiritual gift. And if you've been making the impact you've been making just with natural ability or talent and just with acquired skill, man, what's going to happen when you incorporate that spiritual gift? So we've been exploring this concept um, for the past couple of weeks. And today uh, I want to dive a little bit deeper now and I want to talk about developing your gifts. So we're going to go a little deeper and we're going to talk about developing your gifts. And there's a scripture I want you to check out. It's in um, first Timothy chapter four, verse 14 It's really significant, important, insightful scripture. Listen to what Paul says to Timothy. He says this, do not neglect your gift. Wait a minute. We need to stop right there. Somebody put in the chat. Hold up. Hold up. No, no. Put hold up. Hold. <laughs> Don't leave the D off. Hold, hold up. Wait a minute. What? W-U-T. So Paul is telling Timothy, he's telling Timothy, don't you neglect your gift? Wait a minute. He says, which was given to you through prophecy. When the body of elders laid their hands on you. OK, now we talked a bit about this last week, right? This this idea, the the idea of laying on of hands and the spiritual gift did not come from the hands that were laid on him. But the hand this was it was symbolic. I think it was more than symbolic. I think it was sacramental was that Darius is it's a means of grace is an act that God chose to you. Did he have to use that act? No, he didn't have to use that act. It's uh, it's like in Mark five. I don't know if you're familiar with this story. There's this woman in Mark five who the Bible says has an issue of blood and Jesus is actually walking. going. So she she's uh, like a nonstop cycle for 12 years. And Jesus is actually going to somebody else's house and she finds out that Jesus is, is passing by and she goes and she says, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. I mean, is that the only way she could have been healed by touching the hem of his garment? No, but that's what God chose to use. Does that make sense, guys? If, if I'm making sense, say yes in the chat. So, yeah, that's what God chose to use. So. God chose to use this act of laying on of hands. To give Timothy what's called an impartation. Right. And so I'm oversimplifying this. But Dr. Darius was an impartation. 
is like, are y'all okay? This, this doesn't feel bored. Are you bored? I know this thrives. So we go a little deeper. All right. We go a little deeper. There's no high five your neighbor. Turn around. God's getting, you know, this is on Sundays. That's inspiration and that's revelation and that's instruction. And uh, on Thrive, this is all about transformation uh, through education. So anyway, here's the point, guys. Um, impartation is almost like a like a like a transfusion. It's when the Holy Spirit distributes something to you that you do that you did not possess prior to that prior to that distribution. So that's one th stream of thought. I'm going to give you another stream of thought. Remember, you choose which one you want to live with. All right. Or which one you want to adopt. So one stream of thought is there's something I didn't have. Hands are laid on me or some other act takes place. There doesn't have to be an intermediary. It doesn't have to be hands laid on me, but sometimes God chooses to use that. The point is this. There's a gift that I don't have that I need for a season that I'm in and God distributes that gift in the form of the Holy Spirit. So that's one stream of thought. OK, here's another stream of thought. The other stream of thought is the spiritual gifts that I need are already inside of me and they're dormant and they need to be activated. And so the impartation for some is an activation. So you choose whatever stream of thought you want to use. The point is God either give you something you didn't have or he wakes up something you didn't use. So we're not going to argue about which one it is. The point is something's <laughs> something's even given to you that wasn't there or something is awakened on the inside of you that you weren't using. That's the point. That's it. Because, you know, you know, man, believers they they like to argue and sometimes they be <laughs> like in um in Bible you the the uh the program that I'm running right now um we were having a conversation I think in one of our study halls in Bible you and some of you if you're in Bible you and you in the chat um let me know but um we were having a conversation in one of our study halls about the difference between primary issues and secondary issues. And a lot of the issues that we're arguing about a, a lot of times they're like secondary. They're like not saying that they, that they are unimportant, but they are not issues that are uh, that, that uh, they're not issues that determine whether or not someone's a part of the faith. They're not issues that determine someone's eternal destination. So anyway, I don't want to argue with you. You want to argue. I don't want to argue with you. Because I know some people are like, no, it's activation, Dr. Darius. Hey, whatever stream of thought you want to go with, here is the point. Paul said, so whether, whether it's, whether it's um, distribution or activation, the point is this. Paul told Timothy, he's like, yo, don't neglect that. Let me frame it this way. For my note takers, my teaching assistants, uh, anybody who puts sticky statements in the chat. You're my tech teaching assistants. I appreciate you because some people learn visually. Here it is. God deposits. We develop. It's right here. He tells Timothy, don't be negligent. Negligence isn't abuse. Neg I mean, a negligence, negligence can be abuse. But let's just say if someone's like negligent, it doesn't mean that they're intentionally doing something to harm someone or something. Negligence refers to, watch them, not doing enough to help or to protect or to preserve something. So negligence isn't necessarily abuse, even though it can be abusive. Ne uh, uh, negligence, watch this, uh, is apathy. It's a... Yeah. And you are too. Let me let me come here. Look at me. Look at your boy. You're too anointed for there to be apathy. Did you hear what I just said? You can't be apathetic about you. You can't be in. Eh. There are a lot of things you can be in eh about. Developing your gifts can't be one of them. Yeah. No, no, eh. <laughs> eh, it's giving me, it's giving you, ew. ew, you like, eh, I'm like, ooh. Yo, check this out, family. Paul tells Timothy, don't be eh about your gift, develop it. 
meaning there's some potential in it that hasn't been actualized yet. There's some refining that needs to be done that requires intentionality, that the gravitational pull, uh, like the, the metaphorical gravitational pull is a pull toward mediocrity and apathy. If you're going to be excellent, you got to be intentional. And I want somebody to put right now in that chat that the rest of this year is my year. Come on, say it. I know that's a lot to type. You'll be typing for a minute. The rest of this. But put it in there. The rest of this year is my year. Why? Why can you say that? Why can't why are you telling us to type that, Dr. Darius? You teach, you don't teach us name it, claim it, blab it, grab it, call it, haul it. So why are you telling us to say the rest of this year is my year? Because I know some advancement only comes through intentionality. That if you are in, then in keeps you in mediocrity. But when you get intentional, good God, you get intentional, then you can experience exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think. So Paul tells Timothy, he's like, listen, don't be negligent. That you have a responsibility for the development of your gift. God distrib God determines who gets what God distributes or deposits. But then you are responsible for developing what he's given you. So here's my here's my question. Here's my question. Here's here's here, here's here's my question. Don't answer it. OK, do not answer it. It's a question for reflection. Am I developing what's been deposited? Deposit, deposits are God's responsibility. Development is my responsibility. Am I developing what God has deposited? See, this is what's interesting, all right? This is what's interesting, guys. This is what's interesting. The gift alone makes you good. But nothing fails like success and good becomes the enemy of great. And some of us are good underdeveloped. So we don't have motivation to be great. Here's the problem. The problem is when I'm not motivated to go from bad to OK and from OK to good. Right. From good to great. When I'm not motivated to do that, it, this is what it means. It means that I haven't surrendered my gift as an instrument of service to God. Let, let me put it this way. It means that, watch this. It means that because God's given you the gift, you think it's yours. Oh my goodness. It's not yours. Now watch this. This is what I mean. When I say it's not yours, I mean, he didn't give it to you for you to determine what you would do with it. Now, here's what the Bible says. I, I'm, I'm not I'm not uninformed about this. Here's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 11, verse 29. It says God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. So when God gifts you, he's not going to ungift you. Now, what he will do is he will remove the anointing from the gift, but he will not ungift you. So if you can teach, you can teach. You know what I mean? But. But. Just because he won't take it back doesn't mean it's yours to do with it what you choose and what you please. Gus, like Darius, if I gave you a teaching gift, then I gave you a teaching gift because I want you to use that gift to do what I want you to do. Not what you want to do with it. Because Darius, if you're in control of it, you'll teach the people you like and you won't teach the people you don't like. If you're in control of it, come on. So the point that I'm making here is that when your gift is underdeveloped, it means at some point 
there, there is an audience for which you will be irrelevant. I'm going to say it again. When your gift is underdeveloped, there is an audience for which you will be irrelevant. Meaning that if I, if I did not expand and develop my, and don't continue to develop the gift that God has deposited, there are some people that I'm assigned to help that I won't be able to help because I won't be equipped to help them. And this is something, this is something I talk about a lot. I talk about this frequently in the leadership space, man. I'm so, I've had a few people approach me about this. Like I'm, I'm, I'm so like, really, I'm considering doing one more mastermind. Um, my I three mastermind that's closed for the rest of the year, but I'm, I'm thinking about doing one more of this. Uh, I, I'm thinking about doing an elite mastermind just for, uh, this idea of leadership, because here's one of the things guys that, um, I say a lot to leaders that I serve with, it's this like, yo, if you are, and I don't like ranking systems, but I'm just using this as an analogy. Okay. Just an analogy. Somebody put in the chat. It's just an example. Just put that, just, just put that in the chat. It's just an example. Um, but if someone has been given a leadership gift and they didn't develop it. So let's rank it like on a scale to one to 10. Let's say they are three. It means they can't ever lead people that are fours, five, six, seven, eights, nine, tens. So as long as that leadership gift stays at a three, then the only people they can lead are threes, twos, and ones. Think about that. One hundred percent, guys. So what I'm saying is if we are not intentional about developing our gifts, these spiritual gifts, our gifts aren't being developed. Because here's the thing. Here's the question. How do you develop a spiritual gift? Dr. Darius, I think I know how to develop a natural talent. Right. So if I like if I'm if I got a talent to sing, I can practice. I can go get vocal lessons. I get reps. Right. And that helps me. I know how to get better at a skill. That's primarily repetition. I got to get the reps in. Dr. Dears, how do I develop a spiritual? How do I develop a spiritual gift? though? How, how do I do that? That's what I want to talk about. Can I give you, is it okay? I, I want you to tell me if it's okay. Is it okay for me to give you four steps to developing your spiritual gift? Is it okay? Is it okay for me to give you four steps to developing your spiritual gifts? Because the approach you would take to developing spiritual gifts is going to be a bit different than the approach that a person would take to develop, acquire skill and natural ability. And here's the thing now, here's the thing. We don't want to be hypocrites here. No one wants to, or I put, I'm not gonna say no one, but very few people want to be served by people who aren't growing. I do not want, I mean, I don't know what my doctor does, but I don't want a doctor that's not reading. You know what I mean? Like there can be, there can be completely different approaches and treatments and things like that. Like I, I don't, I don't want a doctor that doesn't read. That's not consistently growing. Watch this. So if we don't want that in those that are serving us, we should not tolerate that from ourselves when it comes to us serving others. So you said I can give you four steps to develop the spiritual gifts. So here's number one. Number one, here's the first step is it's indoctrinate. Indoctrinate. That means once you've got an understanding of what your spiritual gifts are, I want you to catch this. Once you got an understanding of what your spiritual gifts are, then you need to indoctrinate yourself with understanding about how that spiritual gift works. Does that make sense, guys? So let, let me let me get let me give an example. Let me give an example. OK, let's say someone has a spiritual gift called. Um, Let's say they got the gift of prophecy, right? 
So they got prophetic gifting and the gifting is different from an office. Okay. I'm not sure how I feel about offices, but here's the point specifically in the fivefold. But here's the point that I'm making. <laughs> Let's say someone has prophetic gifting without indoctrination. There's going to be emulation of other people who might be doing it in a way that ain't that's not even scriptural. Does that make sense? Let me say it again. So if I if I see I've got prophetic gifting, there needs to be study about this. I need to indoctrinate myself with information. Right. And and this is a completely different conversation. Reliable information. Guys, just in case, and I, I love Google. Don't get me wrong. I love Google. I love Google. Get ready to get some stock in Google. Like, love Google. Here's my point, though, guys. Everything in, on Google isn't true. Does that make sense? Uh, I do this when I, I, and I don't, I don't, I don't. I used to, you know, when I used to try to, in good faith, engage people who I thought really had questions, but they just like wanted to argue. And so I got criteria you got to meet if I'm going to engage you. The Bible says you should. And, and I got criteria. So if people don't meet the criteria, it's like, I'm bro, I'm not even arguing with you. Um, but man, I'll be arguing with people and they would be saying stuff that they, you know, from some book they read. And I'd be like, so who wrote this book? Yes. Yeah, like, in, you know, in 1797, this happened. I was like, so, I'd be like, so is, has that book been peer reviewed? Well, how do you know if what they're saying that happened in 1797 is true? If there are no other scholars that are corrobor that that are scholars in about that point in human history that are corroborating what this guy is saying, even if they disagree with his analysis, are they corroborating the facts? Because anybody can say anything. And so I don't I'm not going to get on this. This is a soapbox of mine. But when it comes to the biblical and here's the thing, I think I'm super passionate about this because um, people with prophetic gifting have added so much value to my life because the prophetic gifting has helped me make decisions when it came to gray decisions. So there are certain certain decisions you make that are black and white. It's like this is right, wrong. This is the right door, wrong door. You're like very clear. Then there are other decisions where it's not black and white. It's gray. And when it comes to great decisions, those decisions are more difficult to determine. Sometimes it's not right or wrong. Sometimes it's good or best. Right. That's a lot difficult, guys. That's a lot, lot more difficult. And so it will be during those times where God would just like. Drop something on somebody's heart regarding me, prompt them to have the courage to share it with me. And they shared it. It would just be like so spot on because you know how some people give like prophetic ministries it's just it's so general it's just like well I don't even know how to vet that it's just so general and I'm not critiquing that I'm just saying that like when it's specific and you know no one else knows oh my god it's so and, and I'm talking about we've had such weird not weird but amazing experiences like that I remember one time we were in New Zealand with a woman we had just met for the very first time and when I can't when I tell you like what what we were going through something in our family right at that time and she was just like boom like spot on like caught said the family member and everything not the name but like the you know the fam it, it was crazy so prophetic gifting helps other people with great decisions but it also confirms things for people when they're taking steps when they're taking steps and leaps of faith that leave them unsure, like prophetic words, like, yes, you're doing the right thing. It gives correction and redirection. It stops people from going down the wrong doors. But here's the point. So it's so necessary, which is why I think the enemy attacks it so much and makes it so weird. He wants to make it so weird that we have nothing to do with it. Man, I don't know why we think spiritual is spooky. It's not. But without proper, here's my point, without proper indoctrination. And if, and if you got prophetic gifting and you're looking for a book on this that is reputable, that's reliable, I represent, I, I, there, there are a few people that I, I recommend. Um, 
I think I'll send them on uh, the, the text message list because I don't want to, I can't, um, I think one guy's, so I know some, I know the authors, but I want to get the exact names because it's like tons of these are running through my head right now. But here, here's the point. I'll help you with that. But the point that I'm making is without proper indoctrination, there's going to be emulation of what you're seeing with other people. And it might not necessarily be biblical. Right. You're going to, it's like, okay, I'm about to make, and I'm not against, I think this is, I think, I think it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just like, it can be some really weird stuff, I, you know? And it's like a lot of times when it comes to, why am I talking about this tonight? I guess this is what the Holy Spirit wants us to hear. But a lot of times when there is, um, the, most of the expressions you see about prophetic gifting, those expressions only work in church with church people. Like some of the stuff we do in church with prophetic ministry, and I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying there has to be different expressions of prophetic ministry because some of the things that we see in church with prophetic ministry, you can't do that at the gym. You can't be at the gym and God gives you a word for somebody and you're like, yay, yay, I say unto you, the Lord says, you know, it's, that's not even missional. One of the things that we do in my coaching certification program, my coaching and speaker training, is we teach people when you have prophetic gifting. Can I give you all this? Is this OK if I just give you this? All right. One of the things we teach, if you have prophetic gifting. In the coaching and counseling space. Bring that gift with you. Just use the gift in the form of questions, open questions, not closed questions, but use the gift in the form of questions. Don't say the Lord told me everything's the Lord told me something's going on with your mother. They only work in church. But you can't say, how's your mom? You see that? So there needs to be indoctrination, man. It's like I we need reputable, reliable sources that are going to give us accurate information about this gift what this gift is and what this gift isn't i keep going back to prophetic ministry a lot of the expressions of prophetic ministry that i see are expressions that mirror the prophetic proclamations found in the major prophets in the old testament and paul talks a lot about the heart of prophetic ministry in the new testament and it is not at least post john the baptist it is not always what you see in the old testament Anyway, so indoctrinate. I need to learn about it, okay? I need to learn about, uh, yeah, I need to learn about it. All right, so here, here's the second one. All right, this is really important too. Uh, so I need, if I'm going to develop my gift, I got to indoctrinate. But in order to indoctrinate, I got to insulate. <clears throat> insulate. This is going to be so, so, so important. Um. This is important now. If I was going to accomplish, if I'm going to, if I'm going to accomplish my purpose and develop my gift, I got to stop listening to people who don't understand it. Come here. Why, why we start clapping? What, what is that? When we, we start clapping when we get, um, I don't know what it is, what that is about us. We get, we get, it's just instinctive. I was about to start clapping on y'all. I want you to listen to me. There is no elevation without insulation. The whole book of Revelations was given to John. So Revelation, Revelation is given to John when he's on the island of Patmos. Isle of Patmos, exiled. And so I am telling you, when you become sick, when you become serious about developing your gifts, there has to be insulation. You have to limit your exposure. I, I, and uh, I did some, some teaching not too long ago about gates, right? What was that? I think that was in Daniels. I got, I'll be doing stuff in different places I can't remember. But there, somewhere I did some teaching on gates recently, right? And three gates that you got to guard. Okay, my Daniels and people say it's Daniels then. All right. So the, the, the three gates that you got to guard, man. And so one of the gates that you have to guard is your ear gates. 
And, and that requires intentionality. And that's it. I'm serious about developing my gift. I cannot constantly be exposed to cynicism and negativity and in individuals that are not serious about developing, no, about developing theirs. Individuals who want to control the way that I use my time, right? I'm going to say that one more time. Individuals who want to control the way that I use my time. Meaning when I start using my time and investing it in a way that's producing a harvest in my life that I want and that I need for my present and my future. And you're upset that I'm not investing it the way that I used to, meaning investing it the same way with you. Then that says something about you. It means for me to stay close to you, I got to stay stuck. Why do I have to stay stuck for us to stay close? Why can't you grow? I feel this right here. I feel a prophetic unction right here. I feel this. Someone put in the chat right now. My conversations are changing. My God. Put that in the chat right now. My conversations are changing. Like I don't even I mean, I shoot the breeze. I'm always going to do that. I want to laugh, joy the whole nine yards. But it's like. People I talk to most of the time, they talking about something. We talking about something. We talking about getting better. We talking about growing. We talking about stocks. We talking about business. We talking about ideas. Like, it's like, we not just, what we doing? <laughs> Insulate the power of life and death. Is in the tongue and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. That what's coming out of my mouth to somebody else's mouth is impacting my mind. I can hear it right now. People telling you, oh, so now so you got so you got a spiritual gift now. So you got a prophetic. Uh, so what you about to do, you about to sell me some holy water and some oil insulate. Everybody, God requires that we give everybody love. He does not require that we give everybody access. Come on here. Abba, my gosh. All right. Number three, if you want number three, say yes. Come on. So I got indoctrinate. Come on. I got insulate. Okay. Number three, I got imitate. Now, wait a minute now. We don't just imitate. Darius, where'd you get this from? We follow after those who through faith and patience inherited the promises or we imitate those. Apostle Paul, follow or imitate me as I imitate Christ. Now, when I say imitate, I don't mean compromise your authenticity. When I say imitate, I'm not saying imitate in practice. When I say imitate, I'm saying imitate in principle. Here it is. It means that you shouldn't try to be what you see. But if you see some of you and what you see in someone else, you learn that and you apply that to you. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is don't pattern yourself after one somebody. That who you are is going to be the influence of different things that you've pulled from different people. And God will help you identify what you're supposed to glean from that person. Do you understand what I'm saying there? I want you to understand now I'm going to I'm about to use a word here and I, I mean this word platonically, not romantically, but there are people that you are attracted to. I don't mean romantically attracted to. I mean that you are drawn to. Right. Because you're assigned to learn something from them. You know, we all can watch. We can watch two, you know, two different types of uh, we both can watch two. I mean, excuse me, the both of us. Like me and you, we can watch um, a same preacher, right? Or teacher. And you're like, man, I like him. And I can be like, man, that's not for me. Does that mean that there's something wrong with that person? No. It just means that you might be assigned to glean something from them that I'm not. So here's number four. And this is so important. 
and that is invest. Invest. And when I'm talking about investing, I'm talking about sowing and reaping. And I'm not just talking about financially. That's not what I'm referring to here. I'm saying you get out. Sowing and reaping isn't just about finances. It's about investment and return. It's about this whole idea of like, you're going to get out what you put in. Did, right? You're going to get out what you put in. I tell people in Daniel's Den all the time, the most important investment you can ever make is the investment that you make in yourself. So like when I'm talking about investment, man, like your time. Like, are you willing to carve out time to get better? <laughs> we spend time doing a lot of different things, but let's like, man, what are you doing? I'm carving out time to get better. You know, one of the things I used to tell my son um, when they were younger is like, hey, son, people don't get better at practice. They play sports. So people don't get better at practice. And when I played basketball, I got better after practice. Because at practice, you're running drills. You, you know, sometimes you're doing stuff. Sometimes you don't even know why the coach got you doing that. You're like, okay, now why are we, why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, you get better with the shots you put in after practice, before practice, right? That's when you get better. So I got a question. You getting your proverbial shots up? Ooh. Did you get those shots up? It's important. Time. And there are times where, yeah, you invest that treasure. It was like, yeah, I put money in a lot of different stuff that did, did not help me at all. If there's a book or a program or something that can help me, that can give me speed so that I don't have to learn this through experimentation. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Why? Because this is what we say. Very often we invest in things to distract us from a life we hate instead of investing in things that will help us create a life we love. That, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the truth. That's the God honest truth. There's a tendency in our culture for to us to invest in things that distract us. Let me have a good time. Let me have a good night. It's like distract one night. So I'm going to be distracted for a few hours from a life I hate. When I could say, you know what? I'm going to invest in something that creates a life I love. So I don't need these distractions. So family, those are four steps to developing your gifts. These are four steps that I try to practice in my own life. And I hope they add tremendous and incredible value to you. Listen to me, man. Listen to me. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Don't be negligent when it comes to your gift. The difference between good and great, excellent and average is intentionality. It's people say, God, I take so seriously what you've given me. I don't want to. I don't want to be negligent over it. I want to I want to use this wisely. All right. So speaking of investing in yourself, family, we're going to get out of here. But speaking of it, speaking of investing of yourself in yourself, uh, there are many of you who, who have been asking me about this. Uh, Daniel's Dan, Daniel's Dan, Daniel's Dan, Daniel's Dan, Daniel's Dan. And I don't have time to explain it all. I want I'm not explaining it tonight. I'm not even I'm not pitching this. Um, but you can go to Daniel's dot com right now. And this is what I'm doing for y'all. We really don't go live with this until Friday. But because y'all my thrive family. This, this right here is what I'm doing. I'm opening it up for you right now. What? Yes. Wait a minute before you jump off and go over there. Wait a minute. I'm getting ready to talk about this offering. Wait a minute. Um, but um, I'm going to open it up for you right now. And if you don't know what it's, it's about, then videos are on there. But um, I think it's one of the most important things that I do. And I think it's for people that are serious about becoming the best version of themselves. And in my opinion, it is the best faith based 
personal development and professional development community out there. I've come across nothing like it. And I'm not saying that because I created it. I create a whole lot of stuff I don't like. But um, I, I believe in this. And it's it's so if you want to be a part of that, jump in right now and go to DanielsDen.com. We're not going live with this till Friday, but I'm letting my Thrive family get in right now. All right. And um, last but not least, man, I want to thank you in advance for your generosity and for your giving and for your sowing into this ministry. You know, I have so many conversations with I'm just so privileged to have so many conversations with people we're meeting literally from all parts of the country and different parts of the world who are being blessed by this ministry. And I just want to make sure people understand a principle It's a kingdom principle, whether whether you apply it to me or to you or not. And it's this, it's this kingdom principle. I just mentioned it of sowing and reaping. But but here's something I think is important. Right. And that is making sure that like out of all the plate, like someone asked me not too long ago, is like, you're like, where should I give? And I'm like, where are you getting fed? Right. No, you know, I mean, you determine where you give. But if you know, if you're asking in terms of biblical principle, you put meat in the storehouse that's actually feeding you. It doesn't matter where your name is on the roll. You know, my name's on the roll at my grandmama, such and such. Or is that actually feeding you? Because if not, you're putting you're putting meat. I want you to think about this. Like you go to someone's house and you're being blessed and ministered to by what's happening in their house. But then when you go to the grocery store, you go and you put groceries in someone else's. And so whether whether that's me or whatever, I'm just saying I think that's just that's a principle that I want people to wrap their head around. Like it's 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 a principle my wife and I've always practiced. It's like, uh, yeah. No, where, where's the place that God's using to feed me? That's the place I'm coming in covenant with, not the place where my name's on the roll. Where's their divine covenant? What is God anointed and using to like, woo, this right here is impacting my life in a unique way. And if I believe this ministry is doing that for some of you, I want to encourage you, man, uh, to give the ways to give are on the screen right now. They've been up there, but just so grateful for you. So happy for you. Well, man, I appreciate you so much. Always grateful to connect with you. Let me pray over you as we dismiss. Father, I thank you that you're moving us from sinking to surviving to thriving. I thank you for the unction, the desire, the discipline to develop our gifts so that we can serve the world more faithfully and more fruitfully in Jesus name. Oh, Father, bless the seed that's sown. Everybody, whenever they're sowing their seed, some of it, some of them need divine intervention. And as they give as an expression of their faith, even those that are watching the replay, I pray that you would honor that seed that's sown into this ground. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, family, God bless you. Take care. Well, listen, thank you for watching Thrive. I want you to make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our teachings. And remember, you can watch me live at Thrive every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take care. I'll see you soon.